Hello my crafty friends, I'm going to turn this cereal box into some Halloween inspired specimen cards. I really like the idea of recycling and this cardboard of the cereal box is a very good thickness to make the specimen cards and the inside of the box is pretty porous so it's good for inks and paints. So I'll just start off using my cutter and I'm just cutting cutting the edges straight and cutting it into three long strips. I'm not measuring the size, each specimen card is going to be different. So it's just to get it into um, a long rectangle where either side is even. And then I'm just folding it in half and then we're going to start decorating. I was going to initially paint one at a time like I've done previously with the other specimen cards I have made but then I thought maybe I will just do them all together. So I've put them side by side and I'm going to decorate them across as if they're one piece. Now in hindsight maybe I could have decorated the full piece of cardboard before I cut them up but this will work too. And I'm just using pieces of just text from a book that I've just cut into thin strips and I'm just putting across and sticking it down with some glue stick. Mm -hmm. Just randomly, some are upside down, some are sideways, it really doesn't matter. It's just the, the what's going to shine through that is going to be interesting. It doesn't matter if the writing is upside down or backwards. After I trimmed the edges, I'm using some white gesso paint with a thin paintbrush and doing a thin layer over the text that I've glued down. This is just to lighten it up a little bit so it's not so bold. I wanted more just to be in the background, not in the foreground. As I'm going to be decorating these all together as one piece before I make them into specimen cards, I decided to attach them with some washi tape so it's easier to work with. I'm going to start with some stenciling. I have some texture paste and my favorite stencil of the moment, which is a Tim Holtz stone stencil, and I'm putting a few areas. I'm not doing solid bits, just here and there, randomly, just so there's a little bit of texture coming through. For some added texture, I'm going to add some of this Tim Holtz grit paste. I'm going to apply it with my spatula, just randomly, in a few areas over the working surface. Once the texture paste and grit paste have dried well, I'm going to start painting. I'm going to use multiple colors in different layers and I always start with my lightest color first and then work towards the darkest. Here I'm using an acrylic paint first which has got a, on the packaging it just says gold it's like a soft muted metallic gold, which I really like. And once it's dry and it shines through the other colors, it's got a little bit of a luster, which gives it a different kind of effect. I'm placing it randomly over the work surface, mainly over the areas where I've used the stenciling. And I use water to smooth it out and let it flow in between the little grooves of the stencil. I also spray water a lot, which helps the, water, the paint flow and move. I'm using four different oxide inks. The first one is called tea dye and this is an oxide spray. I'm not spraying it on, I'm just splashing it on just randomly over the page and using my spray bottle and a wet paintbrush to help it move across the page. The next color is brushed corduroy. I do dry each layer of ink 
before I do the next colour. And since we're going with a Halloween theme, the next color is this beautiful orange called Carved Pumpkin. This one I'm applying a little less randomly. I'm putting mainly over the areas that are stenciled. And the last ink colour I'm going to use is this red called Barn Door. I love having contrast in my artwork, so I always use usually a darker colour. Here I'm going to use black just over the edging and let it, let it run in between the grooves of the stencil. I believe that this gives it a really beautiful contrast. You could leave the black out if you don't like using black. Some people are a little bit scared to use black because it's so dark and bold, but I think it gives it a really good effect, so give it a try sometime. If you are wondering with all the water spraying that I'm doing if the paper becomes soggy, it does to a certain degree, but I tend to dry each layer really well, so it doesn't end up being a big soggy mess at the end. A few black splatter spots, which are also my favorite. And now we're ready to turn these into specimen cards. We're going to start by cutting out the window. These ones I have to do one at a time. I just use a board, or if you've got a cutting board, that's fine too. And I'm using a X-Acto knife and a metal ruler. I don't tend to measure anything really well. If you've seen any of my other videos, or if you're new to my channel, you'll soon find that out. I don't measure anything too accurately. I'm just using my acrylic block, or just my metal ruler, and with my eye, I just sort of estimate around where I want to have the window. I do try to leave the space big enough to accommodate my double-sided tape that I'm going to use, but other than that, it's all just with the eye. The cardboard is quite thick, so the second window doesn't come out straight away. You just need to entice it a little bit with the exacto knife on the corners just to help it out. And just trim off any little areas that you feel um, need a bit of trimming. Do save the little bits that you cut out. We will use those for another project at a later time. For my specimens, I'm using stickers from the Tim Holt range ideology and the sticker pad is called Curiosities. Now, if you don't have stickers or these stickers, you don't have to use these. You could also get images from magazines or books. And no one said that a specimen card has to hold a specimen that was once alive. So for my first one, I'm just using the number 13. I stick the sticker onto a piece of cellophane bag and that's going to be the actual window of the specimen card. Now, because I'm using this bright colored Milo box, 
when I stick it together some of that color might shine through just in the inside so I'm just painting it with some white gesso just to avoid that bright green shining through and ruining the look of my card To attach everything together I'm using double sided tape. So I first start with one layer of double sided tape just around the window and then I paste down the cellophane. Now remember I said to leave the space around the window in enough width so that your double sided tape can fit otherwise you'll have to be trimming it and that can be a little bit messy. Get the tape as close to the edge as you can. As I went to stick down the cellophane, I noticed a little bit of gesso, so I'm just using a baby wipe and a tissue just to clean that off. And I press it down onto the double sided tape. I then open the cellophane because it's from a bag, so the one side is joined. And I put another layer of double sided tape, which will then we'll put that flap over. We'll then put one final layer of double sided tape where we'll actually close the top down. So there's a little bit of double sided tape that we're going to use for this project. Press it down well so it sticks really good and we're also going to decorate a little bit more on the outside of our specimen card. But first I'm going to trim a little bit of the overhang with my X-Acto knife and the ruler. I'm going to use some black thread. This is thread that I use in my sewing machine in the one corner where I'm going to have a sticker over this. I'm just choosing which sticker I'm going to put and I will stick that over the string. I do like the look of the string coming out from underneath and I use it quite a bit in my projects. I'm going to overload it a bit. I'm also going to add a little bug and then I'm also going to add some wording from the sticker collection. And we're haunted for life. I'm now going to create the next one. Because the process is exactly the same, I'm going to speed this part of the video up quite a bit. So you can just see it, but I won't be going through step by step as it's exactly the same. The third one that I've made was actually the first one I made. And silly me hadn't switched on the video. So I don't actually have a video of me making the smaller card. One thing I can say about this one, I'm just having the fatter part of the specimen card not underneath, which is I think maybe the traditional way, it's going to be on the side.
I did secure the stickers with some hot glue as I found the stickers weren't sticking well because there was so much grit paste and texture paste underneath it. A few final stickers and we're nearly done. And these are my three Halloween themed specimen cards. I'd like to thank you very much for watching my video. I do hope you enjoyed it and got some inspiration to create your own. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell button so you can get notifications when my new videos come out. Thanks again and I'll see you again soon. Bye!